Okay. All right. So let's see. Where was I? Um, so how do we make the particles? That is, how do we create the particle definition file? Again, not going to go into a great deal of detail. Why? Actually, I wrote two articles on this last year in April. Uh, and so we will provide a link in the show. But the first of these articles talks about the three basic tools that are available to do this. The three tools that are available are Particle Designer, which is a pay tool, uh, and it's for Mac users. And then there is the Starling Editor, which is a free tool, a yeah, web-based tool. Very nice. Uh, and then there is my tool, which is a pay tool, but low cost, and I used my own tool, because I knew how to use it, to generate these particles. So basically what I did was I loaded up the tool in the simulator, which is what you're seeing here. Let's see if I can make this a little bigger. Okay. Unfortunately, my screen size is not quite large enough to take this to full screen. That said, uh, all I did was is I loaded up the default particle, which is this flame, and then I went in and I changed the gravity settings to zero. And then I went over to the colors and I manipulated the colors a little bit. And I did some other things and I'm not going to go through them all. And then what I ended up with was this particle emitter here, which I then saved by clicking the save button. And I'm just leading you through this in case you, you use this tool. And then I open up the sandbox folder. And in here, let's go ahead and delete them all. You had it open already, and you click Save. Uh, of course, it never works when you're trying to do it. Let's just do that again. Oh, send. I'm sorry. Save is saving. Send. I don't even know how to use my own tool. Send. Uh, the reason it says send here, by the way, is I designed this tool originally so you could run it on your iPad or your whatever and then send yourself the particle definition so you could do your design work on the road. Uh, but that ended up being kind of a problem for some folks. Uh, and the reason was is a lot of email clients would strip off these attachments because I attached these as to your email. And so they'd get like the image or they'd get the definition file, but for whatever reason they wouldn't get both. So now I just encourage people to run it in the simulator. Click send. It will generate a particle definition and save it in the temporary folder of the sandbox. So send, you get the image file, and you get the definition file. And it gives us some random numbers. So every time I click send, you get a new one. And these two go with each other. So 34019, they go together. Then I literally took these, went over, and I created a folder called Particles in the standalone, and I dropped them in there. And as you can see, I experimented with a couple of different ones here. And then I loaded them up with a loader, and I was done. So it was really quick. All right, so that, that's basically it uh, as far as making it look prettier. But um, our goal this week is to close it out and to put it in a framework. So let's go ahead and do that. So as you recall, we've got the Hangouts. I can make that zigzag boom clone. And actually, uh, when you download this, you usually get a zip file. So the root folder will be zigzag boom clone. And under here is app. And the one that we're going to be doing today is we'll, we'll start off with the empty frame. And then I'll put the content in it. So in the empty frame, see if I've got this running here. What I decided to do was uh, some time ago we did a, a series on the composer to uh, the composer uh, library framework library and some some other details about it and in that discussion I provided a ready-made framework with splash screen menu options etc for people to populate so I just copied that code and pasted it into this folder. And the only other thing I did was I added the SSK library, which goes along for the ride with most of my projects. 
Uh, and then I decided, what do I need? So for this game, if we look at the original game, let me bring up the document here. If we look at the original game, I believe they had a splash screen, and then they went right to the main menu. And then the menu had basically the option to click the play button, and it would start playing. These arrows here were to change the color of your player. We're not doing that. They had the ability to unlock more colors for your player. We're not doing that. Achievements and some special feature. I can't recall what this was. Some kind of social feature. Then they had an info option where you can get details about who made the game, etc. And this little um, wheel down here was the options. So I said, what's the bare minimum things I need? Splash screen, a menu, and the options. That's all I want to address. So I took the um, splash screen, I modified the one from the composer demo, I changed the wording, and uh, I, I made a few changes to give it a nicer look as far as the color of the text. It's not that great. It doesn't look like theirs, but I'm not trying to achieve that. Just something similar. A blue background. It's got a two-second timer, so when it loads, two seconds later, it fades over. Now the thing that I find interesting, I'm seeing a lot of games that do this nowadays, is a lot of games like to put the actual game content sort of like just sitting there in the background ready to go and then when you click play the menus sort of fade away or they do something and then you're playing the game immediately. You don't see like a scene transition where the scene moves left or gets loaded. So it's nice because you get this nice active background to your menu and you get the immediacy of going right right in and playing after clicking a single button. So with that in mind, what I did was I made a very simple menu that just has a play button, an options button, and it does nothing else. It doesn't draw a background or anything because when I put our game in here, the game is going to fill in this content and these buttons will float over the top of it. <coughs> So the option screen slides in from the top, and basically what the option screen is, is uh, for people who haven't watched the show, is it's a great big texture or rectangle, 10,000 by 10,000, so it appears right away, and it fades in, which gives us that, as you saw there, when I click it, it sort of fades in, it's blue, it's got a blue background, it fades into like 80% 80 80 translucency, it's got a back button that takes us back. It's got a button for turning on the music, and it's a toggle button. That may be a little bit hard to, to see, but it gets a little bit brighter when it's toggled on. And a sound effects button, which is also a toggle button. So that, that's all there is to it. And then if I were to click play, that would be the signal to the game to start going. So a very, very simple framework. So let's go ahead and take that and start hooking it up with our game. And let me just go ahead and load the game itself so you can see how it actually operates. So there's our splash screen. It looks just like the previous one. So as I said, basically what we've got here is the menu has drawn these two buttons and then it loaded up. It did everything else just like our old uh, frameless version did. It initialized the game. It did everything except for start the game. So what does that look like? Whoops, just closed the wrong one. I'm closing windows willy-nilly here, sorry. All right, let's get this out of here. All right, so main Lua, holy moly, <laughs> sorry. Oh, can you read that? Okay, let's make that a little smaller. Main Lua is completely different from the standalone version because this is for the framework. So what it does is it uh, sets up a system font or game font, it loads composer, loads SSK, loads these button classes that the framework comes with, sets some debug features, I've turned them, to turn them off. I left all this stuff in here from the previous one so people who want to experiment with that, that's good, they can do it. Uh, the only difference here is I turned on gravity because our game uses gravity, so I set that up right away in main Lua, just like we did previously in the standalone version. And then I loaded the splash screen. So if we take a look at the splash screen, 
There's nothing exciting. This is not a very special uh, scene. This is pretty much the same as the original frame. The only thing I did was I set up, instead of using a um, embossed text, I tried that initially to give it a nice highlight and a color for the top and bottom edge, but I just didn't like it. So what I did was, is my own cheapo emboss. 